Hi, everybody. Hey, let's give another round of applause for our gracious host, Grace. Yeah. Also, Guy and Nama and Dror for those awesome new releases that they unveiled tonight, or today. <laughs> so, yeah. So, we felt so incredibly inspired to play with some of these new releases that we just couldn't wait to get our hands dirty, and we decided to build a really cool demo site. I suggested building a consulting site or insurance agency site. But I thought, maybe let's do something a little bit more fun, a little more customizable, maybe like custom avatars. So that was a great idea. Uh, to add some complexity to it, I wanted to gamify it by adding a spill win for prizes. So that's, that's what we did. And we'll, sh we'll walk you through how we made it. So hi, I'm Dahlia. I'm a backend tech lead at the Ecom Platform Group. And I'm Karen. I am a developer advocate at Wix. And today we are very proud to share with you our Avatar Spin site. All right, so what does our site do? Well, we use blocks to create a custom avatar generator. Then we use the new Ecom platform capabilities to create a custom catalog and use the checkout APIs to create a custom order. Then we added a spin wheel so everybody here can win a prize. And one of those prizes is a toast with one of our keynote speakers. So we use the new bookings API to implement it. All right, so to begin, why did we decide to use blocks? Well, we wanted to use blocks because it allows you to implement um, components individually. Um, each component we can work on at the same time. It's great for collaboration. It's customizable for everybody's site. So it's, it's, it's really, it's a great widget. <laughs> so you can slip. Yeah, and it was great to collaborate because Dahlia and I were able to work on the same block or on different blocks at the same time. So we were able to expedite the process of building this site. All right, so we'll jump into the avatar block. First thing we did was we opened the block here, and we started to name our widget Avatar Generator. After we uh, named our widget, we gave the block to the design team. They designed the whole component, and we had access to design presets on the side. So we could create um, mobile and desktop versions that you could use in your Editor X site for different breakpoints if you needed to. Here I'm adding a tablet. Uh, design preset just to play around with it. And with the tablet preset, you'll see it pops up on the left-hand side so we can see a preview of each uh, design preset if we need to. We can also change the design and it won't affect any of the other design presets. So here I'm changing it to a different color and that's not going to affect the desktop or mobile. Back to the site itself, we have access to the APIs, the widget APIs. So here we can add props to each widget. Um, we have that on the right-hand side, and we can change the SVG, we can change some of the default states if we need to, and we can also fire events so that our, our widget can communicate with our site. Um, so our site owner can customize the widget however they want to, in addition to the design. We can also test our, our code. Um, you'll see a similar IDE in the, in the bottom. On the left, hand side, you'll see that we have access to our data collections. So here, if you import a block, it will also import a collection. It can also, so for this example, for the avatar traits, we're using um, different SVG strings for each um, trait itself. So here I have a hairs data collection, and each, um, we created a, fiel a field type called uh, path to load the SVG with the different hairstyles. Uh, we can also import web modules, um, similar to when you use Velo. And uh, we also have access to NPM modules as well. So once we're happy with how we're building our site, we can finally click Build. And we can create major and minor versions of our site, of, of, of our block. Right, so we can press Build. Once you press Build, it will load. And um, 
In a few minutes, you'll see, once it's done, we'll switch over to the actual site that we're going to import the block onto. So this is the site. We turn dev mode on. And on the left-hand side, you can import your app. You can only import apps that you've built. So uh, once we have the app imported, on the left-hand side, you'll see the widget pop up under My Widgets with all the design presets, um, as, as you can see here. <laughs> so once we're happy, we can drag on any design preset onto the actual canvas of our site. And before we start uh, publishing our site, we want to test it a little. So I'm going to just drag this around. And I'm going to check the settings to make sure the properties that I've set in the block are there. So we'll see a little panel pop up with settings. And I see all my default properties are there. The site owner can change these defaults if they need to. And then I also want to make sure my design presets are there as well. So I can also change the preset per breakpoint uh, within my editor X site. Um, you can also use uh, blocks in the classic editor as well. So now that I'm happy with how this looks, I'm going to stretch it. We're going to preview this to make sure it works. And um, pressing randomize to make sure that function works. And it does. I'm going to change the shirt. And that works. So this looks, this looks pretty good, right? <laughs> I'm going to go back to edit. And uh, there's one more thing I want to check out before um, we move on. I want to make sure that my properties and events are available within the code. So I open up the IDE here. And I see that my event is available on the right-hand side. And in order to access the property, I'm going to use $W to select my widget and use dot, and then all your properties should pop up in the autocomplete. So I see that it's available, and um, it's good to go. So that is a little bit about the process of building the avatar block. Uh, now we'll jump into some of the logic. So just like a high-level um, explanation of some of the logic, we basically used in the back end um, interpolated strings uh, with the color hex values to grab the string. And in the front end, uh, we are using the SVG API, which will use dot source, and you uh, equal that to the uh, SVG path. So we're, we're keeping track of the indexes for the color and the um, actual trait within an array. And we're pulling those indexes in order to grab the exact style and color. So this is a little bit about the block, but can we connect this to the Ecom platform? Yes, so of course, for everybody here, those avatars are going to be free. Uh, but imagine you have a business that wants to sell a custom created digital art like those avatars. Um, so now you can use the Ecom platform to create your own customized catalog and also use our, all, all of our new Ecom platform APIs to create your own custom uh, checkout and orders. Uh, so let's have a little look at how we did it. Um, so what did we do on our site? So on our site, we created a custom button uh, to check out. And then we call create checkout on our checkout service. Our checkout service then looks at uh, what catalog we have installed. And in our case, we're going to create a custom avatar catalog SPI. It will call get catalog items on our SPI. And in our example, we just used a, a, we build a collection on the content manager of the site. Uh, but of course, when you use it, you can you, you can get your data from everywhere anywhere you want. And then we're gonna uh, we're gonna use that to get the data on the avatars and return it uh, through our catalog SPI. Uh, so let's have a little look at the code. Um, so on our site itself, we are now importing a checkout from Wix Ecom backend, and then we're gonna define the line items we want to check out. And we're going to call checkout.createCheckout, and then with the line items, and then checkout.createOrder. And we'll have a new order. And it's, it's created in the system like any other order you have. And we can have all the automations on it, like sending email when it's done. And it, it, will, all ha it will have all the data that we sent uh, through the API. Uh, so next up, let's look how we, we created the SPI. Uh, so in your uh, Velo code, you now you will see there's a new section of custom integrations. And we're going to choose a new catalog integration. Uh, we'll run through the wizard. Uh, we'll give it a name. So in our case, we're creating an avatars catalog. So we'll uh, name it avatars catalog. 
And uh, you'll see uh, down here it has a list of two files that are created. There's a config file and there's a file of the actual SPI. Uh, so let's edit those two files. Uh, we'll start with our config. So in our config we can, uh, uh, we can define some uh, discount config. Uh, but for this example, we're just going to return an empty object because we wanted to keep it simple. And now we'll go to the avatars catalog and we'll implement get catalog uh, items. So get catalog items gets as an input a list of catalog reference of all the items that we would like to get for this request. And then what we need to do is we, for each one of those items, we need to go get the data from our database and return it as an item that has the catalog reference as, and the data. So let's have a little look at, of, on how we did that. Um, so we just used the regular rixdata.query. I'm sure anyone that writes code already knows that to read from our collection. And then we created this item that has a catalog reference and it has data. And on it, it has a, the type of digital and also all the, the data about the file that we would like to send our clients at the end. Um, so that's a little bit about the SPI, and I think we're ready to see our great spin wheel. Right, so we kind of walked through the process of building a block, so we're just going to talk a little bit about how this block communicates with the site. Um, so go to the next slide. All right, so in the front end, uh, we've made properties within the block so that the site owner can customize the animation. So they can customize the easing, how many times the wheel spins, um, and also uh, how fast the spin wheel goes. So that's a little bit about how we um, made the block as customizable as possible. Um, within the back end, we created a function, an, an on update function, and um, imported a database or a data collection with our block. So that will hold the quantity and the prizes for each prize. Um, the site owner can change those prizes and change the quantity of that. And within the logic, we've just subtracted the quantity uh, from the collection for each prize. So that way, we don't have to rewrite that logic. It's already imported with our block itself. And then lastly, we have a uh, event that's fired um, within the block that we wrote. So with that, it will send whatever the prize um, that was one to the site, so the site owner can then decide what to do um, at that point. They can redirect the user to a different page, they can send a triggered email, um, it's really up to them. So one of our prizes uh, is a special toast with one of our keynote speakers here. Uh, we decided to use the bookings API for this. And um, why did we want to use the Bookings API? Well, we wanted to test the boundaries of what's capable on Wix with Velo. By integrating Bookings, we wanted to show how quickly and easy it is to add um, another vertical with very little setup and how we can create a custom flow. Uh, additionally, we wanted to showcase the scheduling system as well. So a little preview with how we built the Bookings block. We used multi-state boxes. Um, we did this because it was uh, better uh, in terms of processing, uh, not as much load time. Uh, we start defining each state within the booking process. So we have a state for the speakers. We have a state for uh, what you want to toast with, and that's a custom field in the form. And we also have a state for the times, which we're grabbing from each speaker's availability. So once we define each state that we want to use within our custom booking flow, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a repeater so we can populate that repeater with uh, the data from the collection. So once we have the repeater here, again, we hand this off to the design team because uh, they are much faster at doing <laughs> this than we are. And, um, it looks, looks pretty good so far. It's just not populated yet. So a few things we need to load our repeater with are um, the, the data from the booking services collection. So a few really important APIs we wanted to use was uh, Wix bookings in the front end, Wix data to query Wix services, and also we use a local session from Wix storage so that we can grab the checkout information from everybody in the e flow and pull it into the checkout form within the booking flow. 
Um, that way, the user doesn't have to check out twice and fill out their information twice, and it's a better uh, user experience. So that's a little bit about how we um, built the booking application, or the booking flow. Um, just pasted the rest of the code there. <laughs> and you can go to the next slide. One let me. <laughs> it has to finish. Ah, there you go. All right, so just to reiterate, uh, Within the uh, Wix bookings API in the front end, we're using get service availability and checkout booking. With get service availability, we are grabbing the time slots from each available speaker. And then again, we're using Wix storage to pass session data, session information from the ecom flow so the user doesn't have to fill out the form twice. Within the back end, we're using triggered emails for custom email confirmations. Um, we're also using on booking confirm to remove the speaker from the available services. So we actually created another collection um, with a relative field, a relational field, um, so that we can remove the speaker and check to see if they're booked. So a speaker can only be booked once a day. And lastly, we're using the scheduling system, which syncs, syncs to the staff's calendar. So that's how we're grabbing their availability time slots. Okay, so we've seen the use of blocks, we've seen the catalog SPI, checkout SPI, and the bookings a a API. And now I'm very, very excited to give you a first look of our new GitHub integration and the ability to use any ID. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I guess you already know why you want to use GitHub. <laughs> Uh, so you can pull your code and use it on your local editor, and also it will make collaboration between developers uh, much, much easier. Uh, so let's have a look how we, how we did it. Uh, so in the editor now, there's a new section, which is GitHub integration. And we're going to go ahead and connect to GitHub. Um, so first of all, uh, we need to connect our account. So I did it here. And then I chose a name from our repository. And now it's been created. And I a, it's done. We have a list of commands in order to uh, clone it and, and get it running on our computer. So first of all, I'm going to clone the repository so that we'll actually get all the code uh, to my local machine. And the next thing I want to do is npm install. So when I run npm install, this will install all the libraries uh, with all the code uh, that Velo uses and all of the, all of the other uh, Wix projects that are integrated into Velo. And this way, when you use it in your local IDE, you can have the, all the autocomplete and the, the great experience that you can have uh, currently in our IDE. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I see it in my local IDE. I use IntelliJ. And you can see I have all the code for the backend and also all the code for the different pages. And you can just use it from here. And when you push it, you'll see it in the editor. Uh, and when we go back uh, now, OK, and now when you go back to the site, uh, you look at the GitHub integration, you can see what repository it's connected to, and also some data about the latest commits. And I think uh, we are ready to see it live. Right. Oh. <laughs> so first, we're going to, this is our home page. Uh, our design team created these really awesome avatar assets that we were able to play around with. On our avatar generator block here, we can change hairstyles. I'm just going to randomize this and see what shows up. All right, not bad. <laughs> do you want to change the hair color? Yeah. Let's do, <laughs> let's do like. Yeah, maybe I think she like, looks good. <laughs> Perfect. Pink. <laughs> All right, so now we're happy with how that looks. We're going to go into the ecom checkout flow. So here, uh, the SVG is actually being converted into a PNG, so you guys can download that and use it um, wherever you want as a profile pick, perhaps. And now we just enter in our information. So let me just enter in. Good choice. Thank you. <laughs> uh, oops. I am going to check that I'm here in person. 
so that I actually have a chance to win one of the spin wheels. I also can change my avatar at any point if I need to, but I am happy with how this looks. And of course, these avatars are free. So once I'm happy with this checkout flow, what's happening is it's saving the ID of all this information within the session, session, session storage. And now I can actually download this uh, image if I need to as a PNG, or I can share this on Twitter. And I see this spin wheel. So let's see what I win. I win a toast with the speaker. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this fired the speaker event. So now I can go into the speaker flow. I'm going to choose myself because I don't want to rob any of you guys of the awesome opportunity to <laughs> toast with somebody here. <laughs> so let's do that. I am going to toast with myself with a nice glass of wine, because why not? And the only time I have available is at four. So <laughs> I'll choose that time slot. It's a little early, but it's fine. <laughs> and I'm going to click Confirm. So uh, once we confirm this, we will see every option that we chose within our custom booking flow on this confirmation page. And I also have the option to add this to my calendar. Um, well, I'm not logged in right now on this laptop, so. <laughs> but yeah, so that is our flow. And you also will get an email confirmation as well. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> Just to reiterate. Um, so if you want to hear uh, more, and I'm sure you want to hear more about all those great features we, we showed you. Uh, you're welcome to attend the, our breakout sessions today. Uh, so if you want to hear more about blocks, or uh, we'll be unveiling a new workspace today at 1 p.m. Uh, we also have some really cool e-com platform breakout sessions. Extend and customize your checkout logic with Double Door at 1 p.m. And build your own catalog with Doran Dahlia, who showed us a little preview of that today at 3. And if you want to hear more about bookings, we have How Wix Build on Wix Bookings by Kobe at 2 today. And also How to Expand Wix Bookings uh, by Jacob at 3 PM. Yeah, and we also have a uh, GitHub breakout session, Collaborative Coding for Professional Developers with Paulina, Tal, and Tom today at 2 PM. So we encourage you guys to take a deeper dive into some of these breakout sessions. We just scratched the surface of you know, everything that you could do today. And we didn't really go too much in depth with it. So um, you'll learn a lot in some of these sessions. <laughs> yes. And also, don't worry if you have uh, two sessions you want to attend at the same time. Everything is, is recorded and, and uh, will be shared with you by the end of the week. Right. Uh, so you're now welcome to try the site. Yeah. You can also have a look at our GitHub code. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.